We the People of Detroit is dedicated to community coalition building and to the provision of resources that inform, train, and mobilize the citizens of Detroit and beyond to improve their quality of life. As a community-based grassroots organization, we the people of Detroit aim to inform, educate, and empower Detroit residents on imperative issues surrounding civil rights, land, water, education, and the democratic process. For more information, call 844-42-WATER, 844-42-WATER, or email wethepeopleofdetroit.com. I'm Joanne Watson, and this is your wake-up call. When a brown girl child is born, the earth shifts. The sun is at half mask. The moon waits for her first cry. The ancestors set the table. The flowers turn red as blood. This is your land, continent daughter. With tree trunk legs and branches for arms, this is your soil. Black and fertile as your eyes facing an apartheid Jim Crow current past memory. Some of us begin the removal of shackles at birth. We grow into the armor of struggle quickly. We brew courage and our tea, blend bravery into our Sunday dinners. Joanne Watson, you understand nation building is not a part-time job. This dedicated life is sometimes lonely, a vulnerable choice, but it is the only way you know how to operate. You are wired for the movement in your black women bones, even when tired, still fighting, still organizing, still singing morning spirituals. You are born to lead, even in your own family, the eldest of 10 children born to Jefferson and Lestine. You made Damon, Nefertari, Stephen, Maya. Her children always knew she was larger than life. When you are a woman in the movement, you take the children with you on the journey. You bring the babies with you to your college classes. When you travel to Ghana for the first time, it will be with your daughters in tow. When you are a fearless, nationalist, thinking mama, mothering never stops with your own babies. 30 God children and mentees across the globe. The daughter of a ministering mother is already ordained for good trouble. A seer, a prophetic young student preparing for her lifelong role as servant to her own community. When your purse was snatched in a Farmer Jack parking lot many years ago with your kids tickets to run DMC in the purse, you made sure they still got to that concert and even hosted Melly Mel and the Furious Five in your living room because queens make it look easy when you're a single mom people will tell you what you can't do instead you move to new york city where all four of your seeds to do your necessary work with the ywca because queens make it look easy ghana togo south africa where is your heart mama watson nurturing spirit baking melt in your mouth homemade biscuits how many hours do you sleep warrior watson with endless work ethic and blue collar blood racing through your veins how do we say thank you for your work your time your heart we know you will never really retire there is a fire on the path to freedom there is smoke there is sacrifice. There are stories of justice, of women, of Tubman, Sojourner, of Angela, Asada, Coretta, and Merle, and Betty, and Queen Mother Moore. Some of us know we are ancient, that our marrow is laced with legacy, that we are here to bring light to our daughters. Sometimes it just takes one woman, a mother, a grandmother, a spitfire, a griot, a sister, the only woman to lead the NAACP's largest chapter. She, daughter of the movement, of Rosa, of Irma, she was a birth that gave birth to possibility for other young activists like me, a true D woman, frontline Fatima, Nigerian blood, councilwoman, leader, truth teller, Joanne Watson, social worker, president of the anti-clan network, sister inspiration, dedicated to the protection of girls and the voices of women wrapped in West African beauty, regal and resilient. Wake up Detroit, wake up South Africa, wake up Cuba, wake up small business owners, wake up White House, wake up reparations, wake up teachers, wake up women. Women, wake up schools. Sleeping is not an option when the Honorable Joanne Watson is in the room. I'm Joanne Watson and this is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we're glad in it. 
I want to introduce you to a wonderful, wonderful water warrior named Monica Lewis Patrick. She's our co host, she's our sponsor of Wake Up Detroit. We, the people of Detroit, is her wonderful, wonderful organization. She's the president, CEO, and I want you to please greet Monica Lewis Patrick. Thank Woo! You so much. Thank you, Thank you so we much. We love you, we are so proud of you. And uh, I think this is a good time for us to do a retrospective of the President's State of the Union Address and also the Governor's State of the State Address because water, which is part of your mission, yes, uh, was included in both of their statements. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Uh, we heard from the President uh, not only applauding the historic investment in water infrastructure. That's right. But also recognizing there's much, much more to do. That's right. Uh, that we need greater investment in order to make sure that water is clean, safe, and affordable. You better say it. That there has to be deeper investment in making sure that the infrastructure uh, not only is dealt with in terms of what the crisis are for many communities across the nation, but also making sure that we're investing in improving infrastructure yes. so that it can be more efficient, more green, right. and we're creating more jobs and opportunities. That's exactly right. And he did a lot of infrastructure talk. Yes, he did. Included in that infrastructure is water. Yes. Yes, and it's one of the most critical uh, junctures that we have right now is really helping tie the knot between federal, state, and local needs. Uh, one of the questions that came up early about eight years ago is that we could not wait. My mind. And so that urgency was taken uh, from every community across the nation. Uh, we were asked to show up in boardrooms and private conversations well, well. and meetings with philanthropy. And so thank God for that persistence yes. of water warriors across the nation. You better say it. Uh, of using their voice, using their power, going into those rooms, making sure that we were speaking truth to power. And so we advocated for things like technical assistance for communities to be able to uh, apply for the grants, apply yes. for the funding. We advocated for tribal communities Come on to get more of the resources they need because what we found during a global pandemic, many of them did not have even the basic infrastructure. That's right. So m much of what was happening to them, they couldn't turn the tap back Come on. on. Now. They couldn't wash their hands or properly sanitize because they did not have that infrastructure. So we fought hard to make sure that those dollars were there. And then we uh, galvanized with other groups across the nation to make sure that we were building the legislation in such a way, and you were a part of some of those conversations, where we were centering community, yes. where we were making sure that the voices of those closest to the issue were now. really guiding the policy. That's exactly so thank right. God for Flint and Detroit and Benton Harbor and Chicago and the uh, Navajo Nation and Say all it. of those groups that. that came together in indigenous folks, but also undocumented folks showed up demonstrating that there had to be a pathway yes. to clean, safe, and affordable water. And so we were super excited to hear the president talk about not only what he had gotten done, yes. but that there is so much, much more to do. I heard him say it. Yes, ma'am. I heard him say it. And one of the reasons that uh, we need to stay attuned to the uh, State of the Union and That's State right. of the State addresses and all the other uh, uh, prognostications from our, our leaders is because we ought to hold them accountable. That's right. We need to monitor. That's right. We need to make sure that they keep their word. That's right. That they make a pledge and then maintain that pledge. That's up to us to do. That's right. They shouldn't monitor themselves. We should do that. That's right. And we said uh, early on, uh, it was the first time we had ever been a part of the transition team yes. for not only the president, but for our governor. Come on now. Uh, and we were very bold and courageous in those moments of saying what I we had to were. have. I know you were. Yes, ma'am. But I took much of the lessons that we had learned from you, much of the information that we had developed over the years, uh, and shared that with them, that this wasn't new news, uh, but there had been architects and legislative champions in Detroit that had actually orchestrated this path forward uh, years and years ago. And so they didn't have to reinvent the wheel. Come on, somebody. And then being able to connect with communities like Chicago yes. and Baltimore and Philadelphia, where they were already using the template yeah, to Lord. advance water my affordability. Lord. So when those voices came together and that crescendo began to build, they had no other choice but to move in the pathway Come of investing now. in clean, safe, affordable water. And, and water is a human right. You better say it. Water is a human yes, right. Water yes, was here before man was here. That's right. In the beginning, That's the right. spirit of the Lord right, covered preacher. over the face of the waters. Yes, ma'am. And then the Lord said, let there be light. Yes. And there was light. So water was here before, man. You know, as far as I'm concerned, people shouldn't even be charging for water. Water ought to be free like air. 
Yes, ma'am. But what we know, too, is that when you're dealing with an infrastructure, we know that there is a cost to purify, Certainly. clarify, distribute water, to keep it safe. That's right. Uh, to monitor it. That's right. Uh, to test it. That's right. And so because we understand that there is that cost, especially in Detroit, uh, we know that we're not only paying for the processing and clarifying of that water, we're also paying the legacy debt of expanding that system out That's right. to about half the, the state of Michigan, about 40 percent. And the state of Michigan mandated anybody who wants to do a little history, That's right. do some reading, go all the way back, and you will find out that the state of Michigan mandated that Detroit, which paid for the water system itself, Detroit is bonded That's right. and paid for that bond. The toilets were made to provide water to suburban customers. And then uh, somehow an apartheid system set in mm -hmm. where Detroit residents who own the water department were forced to pay retail rates while the suburban customers were only charged uh, wholesale rates. And that's an apartheid situation that still persists that's and right. is not never acknowledged. I didn't know until I was on city council that Detroiters were paying retail mm. cu customers in the suburbs are paying wholesale rates. And I said, wait a minute, that's, I voted no on every water rate increase as a result. <laughs> I know Absolutely no. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I said no and gave a sermon each time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you did. Yes, I, I, I was did. sitting there for many of them. <laughs> and, and, and a lesson uh, in ownership and, and stewardship. Uh, because the fact that we built this system, we can't stop there. We actually own the system. We own it. And then in ownership, there should be some control Come and on. some stewardship. And so uh, many times, uh, some of the work that we were able to do through Mapping the Water Crisis book. A wonderful uh, publication. Yes, And I want to give credit to We the People of Detroit for not just talking about water. You've written books about water yes, and distributed them all over the world. Well, I mapping have to, the water crisis. I have to really give credit to the, the Community Research Collective and Dr. Gloria House and my, uh, my, Professor my. Gwen Winston. Uh, they, along with yourself, really pushed us and provoked us and said, all of you have been to the academy. You all have degrees, and all of the founders of We the People of Detroit do. And they said, you said to us, you know, don't wait. My Nobody's mind. coming to save you. Well, I remember that day so clearly when you turned your back on all three of us and said, uh, y'all better deputize yourselves because <laughs> nobody's coming to save poor black women and children. My Lord. And that day was uh, transformative for us. My Lord. Uh, we turned the page on that day. My we Lord. accepted the challenge My Lord. that we had to run our leg of the race. Mm. And so at this point, what we're really championing is the ability that we don't have to continue to turn off water in Ooh. Detroit and Michigan. Say that. Uh, that there is a pathway forward, that there is the ability economically uh, that is feasible to do this. Talk about that uh, path. Well, one of the things that we were able to do in 2018, we were able to partner with the National Wildlife Federation, yes. uh, with Freshwater Future, as well as our own community partners. Yes. Many of the communities that had experienced the austerity of emergency management, uh, many of our communities like Detroit and Flint and Benton Harbor and Ecorse and Inkster and Highland Park had all been under the threat or under the tyranny of emergency management. That's right. We had seen our water departments and infrastructure raided and dismantled and divested from. But what we begin to do is come together and talk about what we needed to see That's right. in a water affordability That's policy. Right. And through the brilliance of community, we were able to cobble together 10 must-haves in a water affordability Go policy. Ahead. I like that. I love you it. You see, the 10 <laughs> must-haves, that follows the uh, very close alignment with the 10 things we want that uh, Elijah Muhammad used to put mm. on Muhammad Speaks. Yes, ma'am. And the 10 things we demand that used to be in the Black Panther Press. Mm, yes. You see that, that you don't, you, you were channeling yes, the leadership of our people. This is Black History Month. Yes, it so is. So you might as well go ahead and call <laughs> uh, uh, the name of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad yes. since the Nation of Islam was founded in Detroit. There's a strong Black Panther chapter in Detroit. Yes, ma'am, it my, is. My, my, shrine of the Black Madonna in mm. Detroit. The Republic of New Africa started in Detroit. Call the name. Some, some, something special about this community. Yes, it is. And here you, you got 10 things on, yes, on your list. Yes, ma'am. For well, water affordability. Well, we followed your, your template. Uh, and we put it on the table, and what we were able to craft with our community is those 10-point must-haves. As we were talking with national leaders, what we found is we needed to add 11th uh, component, and that is to ensure that as we're investing in water infrastructure, there's a pathway for communities to create jobs, contracts, That's, and training. There you go. Yes, ma'am. That's a Joanne Watson. Story. I love it. Do you know when the Honorable Coleman Alexander Young, whose name I love to call, yes. when he was mayor, one of the things he did was craft a, a path 
so that he he understood the power of the water department. Yes, he did. And he said that they never ceased to, to come to him in various forms, trying to take over the water department during his during his term. That's right. That, that people need to read his autobiography and, and get that news, hard stuff. Uh, but the, the Honorable Coleman Alexander Young, when he was mayor, he had the presence of mind to uh, take this largest city department called the water department and find a way to bring some black contractors into the water department and making sure that they could qualify for bids. That's for right. the bid process, he made sure that those who did not have capacity mm -hmm. were able to get capacity. So he assigned staff just to work on that. Mm -hmm. we, we're not going to be in charge of a city that's half black and nobody black is getting any contracts. That's right. Uh huh. That's he right. did that for our people. He didn't benefit. He didn't uh, leave any endowment. That's right. He that's did it right. for his people. He made some black millionaires out of out of his uh, understanding yes, of how did. you use power yes, and influence. And uh, for every city department that was audited by a white CPA firm, he had a black CPA firm audit. That's for right. Every every department that was led by a man, he had a woman. Mm, yes. Leader. So half the department heads were women, half were men. That that takes understanding how yes. to use your power yes. for the good of the people. Yes. And everybody ought to do that. They must do it. They must do it. It's the conversation we've been able to take uh, because of your training and teaching with us. We were able to take that conversation not only to the White House, uh, not only in our conversations with the governor and her administration, but that same conversation has gone also to the uh, to, to the IJC, my, my, the my. International Joint Commission for the Great Lakes, where I serve as a member of the Water Quality you Board. You better say it. And we were You're on the board. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> but we were able to lift up the fact that you cannot have these conversations around racial equity and justice, around uh, diversity and inclusion, right. without making sure that there are contracts and there are opportunities right. for people of color. And so we were able to do an audit of the entire system. I love it. So we didn't start outside of ourselves. I we love, started inside the I house. I love that's what you Who do. are we contracting oh, with? Oh, come on now. What that's are the, it. The, what is the, the demographics of those persons? That's it. Uh, what does it look like on both sides of the pond? I Not love only it. in Canada, but in the U.S. Hey. And so starting with that metrics really has changed the conversation internally That's it. for the IJC. Also with water affordability, IJC deals with the international governance of the Great Lakes. Come on now. But we have been able to put on the table water affordability as a major threat That's to right. the Great Lakes. Mercy. And so in their 50th anniversary of looking at and assessing the Great Lakes, water affordability is now on the table. Come on now. I yes, love it. So thank God for all of those water quality board members that see the vision understand the threat, Excellent. and understand our obligation and stewardship is over the Great Lakes. I love it. I love water affordability is not the same as water assistance. You better say it. Water affordability means people can't afford it. And quite frankly, it's been proven that when you provide an affordable water rate, everybody wins. Yes. The city collects more. That's right. That's right. The we, people have their water on. And that's now, right. you can't live for more than three days without water. That's right. Children are not going to go to school uh, when they've not had access to hygiene That's right. or clean clothing or able to wash their hands and wash their faces. That's it's right. not righteous. Well, they, they, they don't have dignity. No. You know, our basic dignity is around our hygiene. It's around our ability to clean our clothes My and Lord. clean our homes. Uh, and what we know in the city of Detroit is that in 1955, the water director at that time said that if Detroit was forced to build out this infrastructure, uh, providing water to about 40 percent of the state of Michigan, that it would drive us into bankruptcy. Mercy. This was in 1955. Uh -huh. And then, of course, as Mayor Young was serving uh, in, in the state legislature, I'm sure he saw over and over again their sure. attempts to attack the water system. That's right. But as you stated, the beauty of it was understanding that we not only had control, but we had stewardship. And That's part right. of that stewardship meant that we had to make sure that the water was clean, safe, affordable, that we were able to distribute it in a responsible way, but that we also, in terms of maintaining ownership That's and right. control, we had to be able to get those jobs. That's right. And so right now, even as we're looking at close to $900 million that has come into the city from various pots of federal funds, what I am deeply concerned about is there does not seem to be a commitment inside of the city to ensure that Detroiters yeah. have opportunities to get jobs, contracts, and my training. Lord, my Lord. And we know on a national level right now, ASME is pushing 
in a very positive way to be able to have greater investment from the Department of Labor yes. into skilled trades yes. so that we can create a greater pathway for skilled trades to walk in, in, uh, in along with the water infrastructure investments. That's right. And so you can't invest in Detroit in a massive way for our water infrastructure and then all the jobs go to the suburbs. No, you cannot do it. And it's, it's disrespectful. That's right. It's uh, dishonorable, That's right. and it's also not practicing equity. That's right. That's you, right. You're not honoring where the money comes from. The, 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 the system is maintained by people who are paying for the water, and those people, by and large, are from Detroit. That's right. Who, people who paid for the water department in the first place. That's right. Who paid bonds. Mm. So the, the notion that Detroiters uh, in, in, in previous generations paid for the bonds that built this best water system in the world. That's right. They built it, paid to build. We have the right to act like owners. That's right. That's right. We, we are the owners of the system and have a right to be treated with respect and dignity and get contracts, yes. jobs, yes. have leadership, and also have some parity with our payments for water. That's right. All, of that, all of that should be on the table. And, and I think that that's the position that we have continued to stand with the residents on is that this is not about us asking for more than our fair share, but my God, we ought to sure get our fair share. Absolutely. We ought to get our fair share. And so we've been able to really lift this conversation, not only in terms of what's happening locally, but really tie barring it to the conversations that are happening at the state level. That's right. Thank God for the Blue Green Alliance. I'm They've not. really embraced this opportunity Excellent. to bring labor and the water activists yes. together uh, to really move, hopefully, something significant. Uh, not only at a local and state level, but really at a national level. That's right. Because we've invested in infrastructure, but we have not invested in maintaining a pathway to keep water on. Come on And now. so we're really hoping that the LIWAP program that was established during the crisis will maintain itself That's as a right. pathway to fund sustained it must water be, affordability. It must be maintained. Yes, ma'am. It must be maintained. And one of the things we also need to do is maintain uh, a, a link with Flint. Yes. We don't want to act as if everything is over in Flint just because it's not making headlines anymore. That's right. The Flint people are still underwater mm. in terms of uh, not having access every day to clean, affordable water. That's right. They're, they're still getting water bills uh, for, for water they cannot drink. That's right. And uh, the water they, they cannot drink uh, but are forced to pay for, if they don't pay the water bill, they put a, the government puts a lien on their homes which is outrageous. And one of the things too that I, I've loved about being in this water struggle is that um, the water advocates and, and warriors in Flint and Detroit and Benton Harbor and Highland Park. That's right, Highland Park, Inkster, that's right. Those folks have never wavered no. in supporting not only the, the need for water advocacy in their community, but they have never not adjoined it to the struggles of water across the state Absolutely. and with other communities. Brother Pink, Reverend Pinkney, yes. always on the front line for Benton Harbor. That's Bless right. his heart. That's right. Always on the front line. And there are so many who stay on the front line in their communities, but they're still connected. That's they're right. They're connected with the movement for, for water respect, water dignity. That's right. Water access, water affordability everywhere. Yes. And that's the beauty of it is that we learned from you, uh, from uh, the great General Baker, my, uh, my, my. from all of those that were a part of not only the Black Liberation Movement, Come on, somebody. Uh, the, the workforce uh, uh, movement, what was happening uh, in terms of civil rights. That's right. All of that has created this quilt of wisdom of a family my Lord. Uh, in Michigan. And so when we talked to folks, what, there was no wavering in Flint when they were dealing with their own crisis to yeah. point and say, but there's still no water in, in Detroit. Oh, come on some, come on Or now. to be in Benton Harbor and Benton Harbor say, Detroit and Flint, can y'all bring us some water? That's and right. And we show up. And of course, there's a family meeting that my takes Lord. place. My Lord. And we were able to share best practices and things that we had learned from our own struggles. So this is why you were able to have a quick response in Benton Harbor say it. that actually restored all the lead lines say there it. Say because it. of what we had leaned from Flint in terms of their struggle where they still don't have all of their lead Not lines Lord. replaced. But the beauty of family is I love you enough to make sure you're all right. That's right. To make sure you have what you need. That's right. And so the beauty of what has transpired from these lessons and, and lessons learned is that we have some good news this morning. My, my, my. Uh, we were able to partner 
uh, with the amazing group of the Flint uh, Democracy Defense League. Talk about uh, it. And that is a grouping of amazing leaders that span from the Black Liberation Movement in Flint, from the workers' uh, rights work in Flint, uh, on through emergency management my, struggle, my, my. on through the water crisis yes. until this very day. Yes. They have been the vanguard for fighting for democracy and democratic practices in Flint. I love it. Well, they have reached out to a group of scholars at the University of Iowa yes. and the University of Michigan. Uh, they have come together with some of our researchers at the We the People of Detroit Community Research it. Collective. And what they have asked is can they adopt the We the People of Detroit's Community Research Collective I love model? It. I love it. So this is going to allow us to codify yes. the We the People of Detroit's research model my, my. in such a way that it can not only be replicated with our friends and family in Flint, Come on now. it's going to help the people of Flint capture all of the data, all of the research, and be able to store it and archive it Come on now. so that the people for years and years to come, we'll be able to have it for legislation, litigation, and just education come of the on, community. Somebody. But we're so excited about the fact that we were awarded uh, approximately $150,000 to launch this project. Excellent. It allows us to put more tools in the hands of community as it relates to citizen science. I love and it. And it actually codifies the work that's already been done. And U of M is rich as cream. As an mm. alumnus, I know that, so they can give you 10 times that much. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. But this kicks us off. I love this it. This kicks us off, and we're so grateful for Flint, so grateful for the, the sacredness of this partnership. It is sacred. Because it's moving our community with a community centered focus, yes. but actually elevating scholars to understand that you must work with community and That's collaboration. It. You cannot do it for us, you have to do it with us. It, it's, it's validated when the community is inside the process. That's right. Uh, you don't do it for the people, you do it with the people. That's right. We, the people, mm. ought to be in charge <laughs> of our own destiny. Yes, I love it. Yes, That's exciting. It is. It is. We're so encouraged by it. And it, it gives us another opportunity to build on our secession planning uh, because that will expand our scholars. It will expand the table. Yes. It will give more tools in the hands of what we believe are future scholars. Come on we're now. also training our 12 to 24-year-olds in the science of water and water capturing and being able to talk about water policies. Well, what you're talking about is something really everybody ought to do. There ought to be a leadership succession plan mm. for everyone at every juncture of the justice movement. That's right. So if people are not planning for their own departure, they're not on the right page. Well, it was one of the first things that you said to me uh, when I asked, you know, would you mentor me personally? And you said one of the things that I had to commit to is that any position that I took, I had to start day one looking for the person that would take my place. Uh, and so we've done that at We the People of Detroit uh, with great intention. Praise God. We spent a lot of time, uh, thank God for uh, the great Gwen Winston, my, my, uh, my. really shepherding us through putting pen to pad yes. uh, and making sure that it wasn't just an idea, yes. but it was actually being actualized. And so we've been able to come together and now we've grown uh, from the five founders to we have three uh, full-time staff and we Praise have 16 God. contractors and consultants. Praise uh, God. And then in a couple of weeks, we will have about eight young people that will be on contract Excellent. for the next two years. Excellent. And so We the People of Detroit has grown our summer internship program from a four-week intensive program to an all-year round program. I love it. Praise and God. so I could Congratulations. just shout on that by itself uh, because people don't understand when you do this work, it, it's, it can't be about you. No. It just can't be. And so to be able to see our babies fired up and excited my, about my, water, my. and then one of the most exciting things that happened this past week is I got a call from the box school. Ah. And uh, the box school has decided that the sixth grade class wants to adopt water affordability. I love it. As their issue. I love it. And it's, it's so near and dear to my heart because my grandson is in the sixth grade at the box school. Come on, somebody. Uh, and so I'm just super excited to spend time with him and yes. his class, uh, deputizing Come these water now. warriors. That's it. That's but it. But for them to invite us in and have already decided what the issue for the class will be, my Lord. I just thought it was a powerful demonstration of the brilliance of our babies Look at God. to understand the moment that we're Look in. at God coming full circle. Yes, ma'am. With your grandbaby. Yeah, I love that's that. My man. My, my, my. <laughs> and, and water ought to be at the center of all of our um, portfolios because there is nothing, nothing that we can do in the world without access to water. That's right. You cannot live without water. That's right. You can't make it without water. And nobody should have to, so particularly an area like this surrounded by the Great Lakes. That's right. Who are we to allow anybody to go without water? That's right. And we've said it over and over again. Uh, the 
Detroit has been the canary in the mine. Come on now. In what not to do. Uh, but it's also been instrumental in helping other communities figure out a pathway of what to do. That's right. And so I'm so grateful for all of the almost a quarter of a century of your work and uh, the leadership of Michigan Welfare Rights and People's Water Board and just the legacy of work that's been I'm laid out. I'm grateful to the Honorable Marianne Mahaffey, yes. whose yes. name I must call, because yes. I was first invited to a water affordability meeting by her when I was uh, asked to represent Congressman John Conyers, who I was then working for before I was on city council. And he sent me to a meeting. He had been called to the meeting by the Honorable Mary Ann Mahaffey, who was president at that time of the city council. And she was actually holding the meeting, and she had invited uh, Maureen Taylor and Marion Kramer. Uh, she invited uh, uh, Mark Fancher's uh, wife, who was a great attorney, and uh, others who were... Uh, active in the in the movement process to make sure that that she had some good people online to help her uh, bring forth a new understanding about how water ought to be affordable in the city of Detroit she did not have support from other city council members mm. so she was actually holding the meeting the city council headquarters at the 13th floor of city hall she was holding this meeting on the second floor in the research analysis division office because she could not find support from other council okay, members. I, I thought that was outrageous. Yes. So as things, as uh, things, fate would have it, eventually uh, I ended up on the city council. And uh, when uh, President Mahaffey started trying to have some more meetings on the second floor, I said, no, we're going to meet on the 13th That's floor. Right. <laughs> we're going we to meet on the city council, <laughs> and I'm going to invite the community in. So I'm not thinking about city council members who don't understand yet. That's right. Their because job. We, uh, <laughs> yeah, their role. No, no, we're going to meet on the 13th floor. Thank we're God. inviting the community in, and the community for whom we're working is going to demand that we get some legislation for affordable water on the table and vote it for in the city of Detroit. Yes. Well, thank God for you, and thank God for the great Marian Mahaffey and all of those revolutionary thought leaders that were able to use the international standard for access to water that we know that between 2.5 and 4.5 percent of our income uh, should be used for drinking water and sanitation. Well, in the city of Detroit, we have a large portion of our population that are paying anywhere from 10 to 25 percent of their income for water, Absolutely. about one in 10 per, uh, households. The other thing that we found is that uh, in 2016, going into 2017, we were sitting in the highest documented cases of hepatitis A in the nation. Uh, but, and we had to remind people that- It's a waterborne disease. And nobody still paid attention to the fact that there were thousands and thousands of Detroiters impacted by that. Absolutely. Uh, Henry Ford Health System did a study that showed that, reflected that, and then people got afraid to tell the story publicly, afraid it, of feedback, afraid of, of somebody getting mad at them if they told the story to connect water shutoffs with hepatitis. That's right. And its incidents in Detroit. But that couldn't stop us who knew. Yes, ma'am. From telling. Yes, ma'am. And the beauty of even that, that collaboration uh, was years in the making of having conversations about uh, is there any kind of comparative analysis that would look at just the public health data? That's right. Well, one of the things that we were able to highlight even during the bankruptcy as we were in those conversations is that our health department had been defunded Come on and now. actually dismantled. Yes. Uh, and so some of the tracking that we were used to getting at a high level, we knew we were no longer getting those right. stats. And so thank God for, for Mr. George. Uh, that former health director my, my, my. Uh, who was able, uh, even in his 90s, yes. uh, to George be able to, Gaines. Mr. George Gaines, That's right. uh, he was able to gather together with some students that statistical missing information that showed that there had been an uptick That's right. of waterborne diseases That's during right. that period of time. But it was also Henry Ford that was able to take 37,000 cases, lay it over our water data, That's right. and demonstrate that even if you live on a block where you have water, and all of your neighbors have water, if just one of you don't have water. It impacts it, the purity of your water. Yes, ma'am, it does. Yes, it does. So this is why we have to not only be concerned about our own individual households and our ability to pay for water, we must be our brother's keeper in you Detroit. You better say, we're we connected. Must be. We're connected. Yes, we are. We, even if we don't want to be our brother's keeper, we are. We are. We <laughs> we're going to take a short break, and we've got our sponsor and co-host, Monica <laughs> Lewis Patrick. The queen of water warriors is in the house, and we shall return right after this. Wake up, Detroit. 
If you or someone you know is facing eviction and has a notice to quit or a court order summons, complaint or judgment, there is help to avoid eviction. Call the Detroit Eviction Helpline at 866-313-2520 or visit DetroitEvictionHelp.com. The City of Detroit with the State of Michigan have eviction prevention programs to assist Detroit residents with financial assistance and legal representation. Again, Detroiters can call 866-313-2520 or visit www.DetroitEvictionHelp.com. That's 866-313-2520 or go online to DetroitEvictionHelp.com. Again, Detroiters can call 866-313-2520 or visit www.DetroitEvictionHelp.com. 866 313 2520. Get help today. You ready to put your podcast on iHeartRadio? Yes, your podcast on iHeartRadio. What about Alexa, Roku, Fire Stick, Apple TV, Android, or iPhone? Plus live TV streaming. Get your podcast seen and heard all over the world. Call 313-868-6612. Pre-recorded shows are accepted to be archived. This is a WHPR distribution platform. Download the app from the App Store. Go to WHPRTV.com. Channels available for lease 24-7 on Roku. Roku, Fire Stick, or Apple TV. Coming soon, subscription and pay-per-view. Also, Block time is available. Get yours. Call 313-868-6612. That's 313-868-6612. Executive producer, R.J. Watkins. Program director, Henry Tyler. 107.5 FM, WGPR, HD2. Radio, we can see dot com. We, the people of Detroit, is dedicated to community coalition building and to the provision of resources that inform, train, and mobilize the citizens of Detroit and beyond to improve their quality of life. As a community-based grassroots organization, we, the people of Detroit, aim to inform, educate, and empower Detroit residents on imperative issues surrounding civil rights, land, water, education, and the democratic process. For more information, call 844-42-WATER, 844-42-WATER, or email wethepeopleofdetroit.com. Joanne Watson, and this is your wake-up call. Wake up, Detroit. I'm, I'm Joanne Watson, and we have Monica Lewis-Patrick in the house. Co-host, sponsor, we the people of Detroit, is here. I'm so happy to have Monica Lewis-Patrick. She's here, and she's always bringing great news and great advocacy. She's the queen of water warriors, not only in Detroit and the state of Michigan, but around this country. Monica Lewis-Patrick. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. It's- it's a pleasure to be here, and we just consider ourselves servants, uh, doing a great work uh, for the people of God, and, and so excited about Detroit and where we are in this moment. Uh, we Amen. really think that we are on the verge of great success as it relates to the work that you and the Honorable Mary and Mahaffey and so many water warriors have seeded over a quarter of a century of that work. Uh, and so we really think that we are on the cusp I of really turning that page. You always telling the history of the water affordability. I'm grateful for that because many people uh, don't acknowledge that. As a matter of fact, you're telling somebody in the city council staff the history of the background of reparations uh, in, in uh, this community led to me being invited to serve on the reparations task force. You told them you could not accept an appointment because they had not asked me. Yes, ma'am. You didn't have to do that. Many people would have just said, oh, yes. No, ma'am. You didn't do that. So I, I want to thank you publicly for acknowledging. And I just think it, it, it says something about character. Yes, ma'am. And respect for people to acknowledge what happened before then. That's why I, I try to always acknowledge the Honorable Coleman Alexander yes. Young and the Honorable Ermel Henderson and the mother of Rosa Parks, whose birthday was just Saturday, yes. turned 110. Uh, because we did not invent anything. We're That's standing right. on the shoulders That's right. of others That's who right. helped us, who shepherded us. That's poured right. into us. So, well, I know that I'm required 
to acknowledge those who came before me, and you have done the same thing, and I'm, I'm just so proud of you, and I thank you. Yes, ma'am. Well, we owe, and we owe, uh, and I know it with every ounce of my body that I owe, that there is no position, no opportunity, uh, no gift, no blessing that I've been afforded, that somebody didn't pay a price my Lord Jesus. Uh, prior to me getting here. And then one of the things that we have learned uh, from your shepherding is that it takes nothing away from me to acknowledge all that's been done before me. It takes nothing away from me. As a matter of fact, I believe that it is one of our responsibilities is to demonstrate and model uh, that Amen. kind of legacy building, that kind of sacrifice. I know we had the same conversation uh, yesterday with a, one of my volunteers who was super excited about LeBron James my, my, my. breaking uh, Kareem, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's Abdul record. record. Yes. And so he was saying he's the greatest ever. And I said, whoa, let's wait a minute. Uh, he's the greatest for this time. That's right. But he stands on the shoulders of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You better Jabbar. say it. You better That'd be say like that. me telling you I'm better than my mama. Hey. I can't be better than my mama because my mama's done it better than I've ever hey, done it and come, ever could do it. You better it. say it. But I'm an extension yes. of my mama. That's right. And so that's what I, I think we are in this moment is that we're an extension, uh, hopefully a, a proud and, and honorable extension of your work, of your legacy, of all of those water warriors, uh, Mother Irma Henderson. My mama. Uh, the great honorable. Honorable Coleman Alexander my, Young, my, my. Uh, the legacy and the work that was put in by Mary and Mahaffey, you the great Mary and Mahaffey. And so it's the combination of all of that that we stand on in this moment. That's why we don't take a victory lap. We're celebrating and applauding all that you have done and others have done to sacrifice for this moment of accomplishment and achievement. I, I appreciate that. And, and the fact that you always honor those who've gone before you uh, is a tribute to why the Lord continues to bless you and we the people of Detroit. Yes, ma'am. Because people who don't acknowledge who came before them will never be blessed. Because mm. none of us do it by ourselves. That's right. We're not, we're not individualistic. That's right. We are blessed to be in, in a movement yes. that allows us to stand on somebody's shoulder. Somebody's prayed for us. Yes. Somebody's fought for us. Somebody's paid our bills for us. Somebody mm. helped us raise our children. Talk about Somebody. It. Yes, they has have. been good. Somebody anointed us. Somebody nurtured us. Yes. So we're blessed to be here. Yes. And I often tell my young people as they talk about, you know, what's the secret sauce? What's what's the <laughs> what's the one word answer? And I tell them, I said, you know, uh, you must be mentored. My Lord. You must be mentored. You've got to seek out persons that have exhibited the leadership that you desire to be a part of and to emulate. Uh, you've got to find people. Uh, and I, I look for folks that needed, I needed spiritual grounding. My Lord. I needed uh, people that were working with community and honesty and integrity. You better say uh, I wanted a mentor that would pour into me, not from the standpoint of, of an opportunity to just say I'm your mentor, but really changing my life. Say it, say Sowing it. in in a way that I would be able to distribute more to others. Yeah. And so I just thank God for you. Uh, you have been unwavering. Uh, there's not a time, day or night, and I've done it. I've called you at four, uh, <laughs> and you still answer. I've called you at six. I've called you at nine and ten. Uh, and just thank God for you. Thank God for your mentorship. And I know not just of me. You have mentored our entire team, our entire organization. Uh, the reason we had the confidence to step out and establish a 501c3 was because you told us we could do it and that we must do it. And so it was the champion of the voice of the mama. Uh, the black matriarch in this moment. And so it has been you. It has been uh, the, the honorable uh, work of not only yourself, but also Mama Neb, my, uh, my, my. the great Dr. Gloria House. And Professor she is Gwen great. Winston. And you know, yes, Dr. Gloria is. House, uh, Sister Neb Kosasile, who is uh, beloved and uh, is the eminent artist yes. uh, appointed by Kresge. And uh, she is to be honored and respected. And she should be declared poet laureate of the city of Detroit yes immediately by us yes so uh, the folks have been waiting for the executive branch of the city to mm. do they're taking too long that's right they're taking too long that's right that's right uh, and the people the have city already council decided. can do it I named with my own legislation uh, the, the the great Ron Milner poet uh, playwright laureate for the city of Detroit through legislation yes I didn't put my finger up in there and see which way the wind was blowing. I did that because I knew he deserved it. That's right. The great Ron Milner, our playwright. That's right. And uh, anybody on city council who may be watching right now, <laughs> you have the right to write legislation to create law declaring that our sister, Dr. Gloria House, 
uh, Aneb Kosi Sealy is the poet laureate for the city of Detroit right now. That's right. That's if, right. if the executive branch hasn't got a clue, we yeah. already know who That's the poet right. laureate is. That's it's right. It's Dr. Gloria House and Neb Kosi Sealy. Yes, ma'am. The people have spoken. Come on now. The, people the Council spoken. of Elders has said so. That's the right. uh, Pan African community has said so. The Nationalists have said so. Malik Yakini read, ran a beautiful set of pieces on, on Facebook asking people to sign up and and uh, nominate, and they did all of that, and sent things to key people inside of the city administration, and no answer yet. Mm. 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 Lord, Disrespectful. We're not accepting that. That's right. So That's no it. answer is an answer. That's it. So That's it. we declare we don't need you. Mm. We don't need your validation. Mm. We declare That's right. that Dr. Gloria House is That's the right. is our poet laureate for That's the city right. of Detroit right now. That's right. And mm. the people have spoken. The people have spoken. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Mm. But Council it, of Elders has spoken. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. So enough said. Hey. <laughs> enough said. You know, the when you consider what the nation, what the world has been through with the pandemic, one of the things I'm deeply concerned about is there's not been enough uh, resource and help for those who have lived through trauma. Mm, yes. I've run into a, particularly young women, young women who are on the front line in the healthcare industry, who are nurses and CNAs and who are working in uh, nursing homes, rehabilitation institutions, who have been helping families and helping people, many who've crossed over mm -hmm. and become ancestors as a result of this scourge of a virus. But they themselves are also traumatized and they just work the heck out of them, yes. working many shifts and have not had a chance to rest or get restored or be healed or to have anybody even acknowledge the trauma they've lived through. That's right. So people are expected to just do business as usual when their lives have been thrown into chaos. We need to do something to help yes. families. And you know, it's wonderful to have a state of the state address and a state of the union address, but the real areas that need to be addressed have to be done person by person. Our families are, are not yet whole. That's right. Well, when we look at the stats and what happened uh, in the state of Michigan, uh, black folks make up about 14% of the population. Yes. But we were 40% of the deaths. My Lord Jesus. During the height of the COVID pandemic. My 40%. Lord Jesus. So that meant it, one in, in Disproportionately every impacted. other person uh, was dying in, in our, our state. And what we know that that does for black families, uh, big mama and mama That's and right. papa That's and right. daddy. And so we saw whole families wiped out. My Lord Jesus. And, and nothing but maybe a couple of children left. My Lord. Uh, or we saw the main breadwinner. My Lord. Uh, totally debilitated and no longer able to go back to work. Uh, we saw that play out over and over. I had to remind folks on my team the other day, it took the city four and a half months to begin to engage in restoring water. This was in a global pandemic as we were demanding a moratorium, demanding restoration of water. Uh, a lot of people pat themselves on the back that our governor and our mayor were the first to actually issue a moratorium. But that was after years of begging Absolutely. that we not go in this direction That's of right. putting health and the welfare of our residents in jeopardy. Because I wrote legislation, and I've been out of office for some years now, yes, saying to do not shut the water off. Yes, you did. Don't shut the water off. That's right. There's a way for people to pay what they can afford to pay and keep everybody's water on. That's right. So the, the city never should have shut anybody's water off particularly after that legislation was introduced because we found the money to pay for the citizens to keep the water on. When uh, Victor Mercado, a former water director, admitted, I think the Holy Spirit made him admit it mm. <laughs> in the middle of a public <laughs> hearing. <laughs> I had called on the water. Uh, Victor Mercado, the water department director at that time, he started stumbling and fumbling and all of a sudden out, out came some information about uh, some money that he had kept off budget uh, when people paid their, their uh, water bills late, delinquent, he put them in a different fund. And it was $5 million he collected mm. that year. I said, oh, there's oh, the money. That's right. There's the money. That's right. And that money, half of it, uh, our sister Cecily used that to pass it out to people who needed their water mm. off. That's right. So there's always a ram in the bush. The Lord will give it to you if you just fight. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And what we know is that uh, if you find a good fight, you better get in. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so we know that from you and, and Mayor Young, uh, water has been one of those major fights for the residents of Detroit. That's right. And so thank God we were super uh, pleased with the first step by the governor to invest $25 million yes. toward maintaining uh, water and water access. Yeah, it needs to be $100 million. Yes, it should. Mm -hmm. It should. And we've continued to say that. We've we've sent that message uh, directly to the administration. We've if y'all watching it. right now, it should be $100 million. A hundred million. Yes, ma'am. And we've also uh, continued to applaud this first step because we spent many years uh, battling denialism, yes. uh, battling this position that somehow that Detroiters somehow was just shiftless and lazy and not paying Don't their fair share. need to take a bucket and go to the Detroit River. Mm. Help me, Holy Ghost. Oh, please. Racist. Mm. 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 Lord have mercy. Out of be Shame to yes. show your face in the city making a statement like that. Of the people of Detroit. Hmm. Of the people you of Detroit. You better say it. And so uh, thank God that the governor is at least uh, taking note of the fact that there has to be deeper investment. That's right. Uh, not only from the residents and the ratepayers, but we must see an investment at the state and the federal level. That's right. Uh, the $25 million is a first good effort. That's right. Uh, but we're going to be pushing for much, much more in order to make sure that we're shoring up the apparatus to actually codify moving water affordability. That's right. So that the utilities will not be in uh, this precarious situation of saying they don't have the wherewithal, they don't have capacity. We want to make sure the funding is there and then the le legislation should shore them up yeah. that they can no longer continue to shut off water. Be no, they cannot continue to shut off water. It's, water is a human right. It's a human right. And nobody should tolerate water shutoffs. No one. That's we can't right. live without water. That's right. That's so right. we can't be comfortable in our own homes with our own little families with the knowledge that some people in the same community are without water. That's right. How can we live? That's How right. can you sleep at night knowing some of our brothers and our sisters don't have access to water? Well, in the pandemic and even before that, the epidemic demonstrated that we are all deeply connected. Yes, we are. Uh, that there is not just your household Come and on, not somebody. just your family. You better say uh, it. That your children interface with other children. Mm. And if those children are coming from homes where they cannot afford to keep their water on, mm. uh, then the possibility of that baby coming and interacting with your baby hey. increases the probability of some kind of public health impact. That's and right. So and this beyond is, the children, somebody right. who's watching us right now is going to drive through a, a drive through lane some time today that's right and ask for a cup of coffee that's right somebody serving them that coffee through the drive through window may be coming from a house that has no water that's right then that is impacting you that's right so we all are impacted when there's water shutoffs are going on you don't you don't you can't get around it that's right that's right. It's, it's all connected. It's like all the infrastructure connected. is all connected. And so we're still asking folks to sign up. Uh, thank God for these airways. Yes. Thank God for Wake Up Detroit. Wake Up Detroit. Uh, because it's been this kind of station and information dissemination that really has pushed, I think, the, the Lifeline program with the city of Detroit and, and the administration and DWSD to do more than they intentionally had started out committing themselves to What's do. What's the status of Lifeline now? Well, where we are right now is that uh, we uh, have been able to extend the moratorium uh, for those that sign up for the program into the first of the year. Excellent. Uh, and so actively right now, according to Mr. Brown, they are not actively shutting off water, Praise but they God. are preparing to shut mm. off water within the next few weeks. We are still pushing folks to sign up. Please yes. call Wayne Metro. If it's not you, if you have a family member, a church member, get this information out. This yes. is some news you can use. But have them call 313-386-9727. 313-386-9727 if they need to get their water, uh, if they need water assistance. If you've had challenges with reaching the water department, you haven't been able to get through, uh, you've been on a long wait and there's still no response, then we know that they've hired 30 uh, caseworkers to be able to reconvene with the uh, Wayne Metro to help get people back on the program, but there still has been some challenges for mm. folks. So we're asking you to call our hotline, yes. and we the people of Detroit, that number is 1-844-42-WATER, 1-844-42-WATER. This is for folks that you have just found no resolve yes. as you're trying to get your water service. And then for those that have not been able through either our efforts or Wayne Metro to get any service, then that's the time that you contact our ombudsman, uh, which is Mr. Bruce Simpson. My, my, my. And he's been a wonderful support and ally to the yes. community around helping us navigate some of the complexities of what's happening with the Lifeline. My, program. my, my. And that's the grandson of the Honorable Barbara Rose Collins, y'all.
Bruce Simpson, the city ombudsman. Yeah. So he's got the genes of his grandma, <laughs> and he's going to do the right thing. Yes, he is. He's doing an excellent job. My, my, my. Excellent job. We want to uh, thank you for being such a, a brave, courageous queen, water warrior for our thank people you, for such a time as this. You're so committed. Mm, thank You're so, you so generous much. with your time and your talent and your resources and your understanding. And it's never about you. All you do is fight for the people, yes, push for the people. You're not trying to uh, add anything to yourself. It's always about helping somebody else. And praise God for that. Yes, praise ma'am. God for that mission, that centeredness, other centeredness. I love that. And God loves it too. Thank you so we much. Thank you so much for being our sponsor, for being our co host. And it's always a blessing, it's an education to have you bless us here on Wake Up Detroit. Yes, ma'am. Well, it's always an honor to be with you. Uh, I treasure every minute, every second. Uh, and it's always an opportunity for us to spread the good news uh, that we are uh, working through self-determination and cooperative work to build a beloved Detroit. Praise God. Praise God. Monica Lewis Patrick, CEO. <laughs> we the people of Detroit. My, my, my. We give God all the praise. Only God is worthy to be praised. We certainly want to invite you to join us any Sunday at 11 a.m. at Westside Unity Church, 4727 Joy Road. Uh, an hour of power and praise. The Lord is our light and our salvation. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my song. The Lord is all we need. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. Amen. Wake up, Detroit. We, the people of Detroit, is dedicated to community coalition building and to the provision of resources that inform, train, and mobilize the citizens of Detroit and beyond to improve their quality of life. As a community-based grassroots organization, we the people of Detroit aim to inform, educate, and empower Detroit residents on imperative issues surrounding civil rights, land, water, education, and the democratic process. For more information, call 844-42-WATER, 844-42-WATER, or email wethepeopleofdetroit.com.